Hello, finally I see you all. It's been more than a month since my last child first blog. I have a lot to share with you about what's transpired since that time. So I'll go ahead and do that, touch on some key points. In July, NAD had their annual conference in Louisville, Kentucky. Very grateful to NAD for providing Child First campaign with a small platform so that we could explain our key points, talk about the Child First campaign, what it's about, our goals, and how it's evolved since originating in 2010. I was very impressed with the level of concern and commitment that the audience demonstrated as a result of our presentation regarding Child First. Some even contributed money to our efforts. There was an evident display of support for our desire to raise the bar in deaf children's education. After my presentation, we passed out some Child First brochures, which were hot off the presses at that time. The brochure is five pages in color, and it details Child First principles, as well as summarizing the Child First campaign. I encourage you all, if you have not yet seen it, to please check either the NAD or CEASD websites. You can print the brochure from either web page. I'd like to thank all the various players who were involved in printing that brochure. From Barbara Raimondo, who's our government liaison, to Claire Bogan, who all worked hard along with the feedback that a variety of people provided us during the process. We plan to use the brochure in the days and weeks to come. After that presentation in July, we had another event in September where the Child First Steering Committee met in Connecticut. That meeting was over Friday through Sunday. And amongst other things, we looked at identifying the steering committee's roles and the executive committee's roles. As I've shared with you in the past, the executive committee has focused on child first and it's made up of five individuals. Myself as the CEASD president, James Tucker, who is superintendent of the Maryland School for the Deaf, Ed Basso, who's vice president um, at Gallaudet at the Claire, Claire Center, and as well, Barbara Raimundo, who is our government liaison. We also have Joe Finnegan, who's the executive director of CEASD. So the five of us have been meeting from time to time since the birth of the Child First program, and it has comp been com more complex over the time that we first started the group. We've decided to create a steering committee, which includes the five of us, plus six various other superintendents. Claire Bugin, who is from the Texas School for the Deaf. Don Roten, who is from Western Pennsylvania School for the Deaf. Ed Peltier from American School for the Deaf in Hartford, Connecticut. We also have Harold Mall, who is from the Rochester School for the Deaf. Mark Carlson from the Beverly School for the Deaf in Massachusetts. And we also had Judy Reland, who is head of the Learning Center in Massachusetts. So the role of the steering committee is to look at big picture issues, to look at the vision of the Child First campaign and to work on a strategic plan. 
The steering committee we foresee will meet about three to four times a year, while the executive committee, made up of the five of us, will focus on more everyday issues and will be in more frequent contact, whether that be through email, through video conference discussions. And with the executive committee, as well as the steering committee, plus the CEASD board and the NAD board, with all of those together, we have quite a bit more manpower and resources connected to the Child First campaign. At the NAD convention in Kentucky, it, would, it was evidenced clearly that NAD and CEASD have a strong partnership, which is getting stronger. Chris Wagner, the president of NAD, and Howard Rosenblum, who's the executive director of NAD, are also members of our steering committee. NAD and CEASD are having ongoing discussions about how to work together and the ways that the Child First campaign can be supported. And I'm happy to announce that in Connecticut, when the steering committee was formed, we were able to develop a new deaf and hard of hearing education bill. As you know, when the Child First campaign first originated, we were looking at the IDEA and the possibility that it would be reauthorized probably about this time, 2012, 2013. But due to the economy becoming the top issue for Congress, the IDEA reauthorization was postponed and might not even happen. So our strategy had to shift, and we decided to move forward with a dead, deaf and hard of hearing education bill. So we're not looking so much at IDEA reauthorization. We want that bill to be a standalone bill, not as part of the IDEA. The blind community students will also have their own bill connected to the unique issues facing blind and visually impaired students. So we in Connecticut plus the CEASD board met and adopted a bill that was developed in part by different attorneys such as Barbara Raimundo, Howard Rosenblum, and other attorneys who got together and had a work session, met several times, and that was adopted. The NAD board also adopted the bill and named it the Deaf and Hard of Hearing Education Bill after Alice Cogswell, the Alice Cogswell Bill. We wanted to align it with the blind community who had named theirs Macy Sullivan's bill after Ann Sullivan, who taught Helen Keller. We felt that naming our bill after Alice Cogswell was in line with that. So with the elections completed last week, we now have a clearer picture of those who are in office in our US Congress, and soon you will know who has been selected on the various committees serving on the Hill in Washington, DC, as well as who the chair people are. We'll know that in January or February. And once those positions are filled and set, then we can move forward with discussions about the Cogswell bill with those key players. We are realistic. We have a Expectation, of course, that we might that, that the bill might not become law in the end. Um, we don't have 100% confidence in that, but we know it's a process, it's a work in progress, and that is more important than the final product. For all we know, if we move forward with this, we might have the bill looking different at the end of the process than it does now. This process is an opportunity for us to have more discussions with the United States Congress and staff and other key players to raise awareness about the unique issues and challenges that are facing deaf and hard of hearing 
children. We want to raise awareness, providing opportunities for new relationships. I think that will serve us well. Further next steps, since the elections are over, we are working on strategic planning, tasks for superintendents, for NAD, to be in contact with a variety of Congress people who are in office and set meeting times with those individuals. Relationship building will be a critical part of our effort to raise awareness and address these serious issues in the field. The steering committee's meeting in Connecticut um, happened earlier this year in September, and we will have another meeting in January. It will be right before the Deaf and Hard Hearing Education Summit, which is planned by CSUN PEPNET. NASDSE, which is the National Association of State Directors of Special Education. Typically in the fall, the CEASD board meets at the NASDSE's annual conference. It always provides us a wonderful opportunity to network, to meet with various state directors of special education throughout the country and often the U.S. Department of Ed and mostly the OSER's office, the Office of Special Education and Rehabilitation Services office, often sends people there as well. So in Sacramento, at NASDSE's meeting, three people were sent from OSER's to come. So it's a great opportunity to network with those individuals as well. One great thing that happened in Sacramento was that amongst the NASDSE board and then the CEASD board, we had a joint meeting. It was a very good an hour and a half discussion on Child First. We were able to pass out brochures and talk about other key issues that affect the deaf community. For example, accountability, the use of test data to measure how deaf children are progressing in school. So that hour and a half meeting with the, that board of NASDSE um, is just a beginning. And in the future, we'll have the same kind of opportunities. So Child First is also asking for time at the next NASDSE meeting in the fall of 2013, which will be in Atlanta, Georgia. We're hoping to have a part in their program and an opportunity for some of us to present about the Child First campaign to all of the state directors of special education and the other participants as well. Even though Child First focuses on deaf and hard of hearing children's education, there are many principles that can be applied to other special ed um, groups or categories of students so that it's relevant and meaningful to the whole audience. So hopefully we will have that opportunity. Before closing, I'm thrilled to share with you all that CEASD is now in the process of revamping our website. Part of that website will have a Child First homepage. We're hoping in the next one to three months it will be ready for your viewing so that you can access all the different materials and information and stay in touch with Child First and current events regarding the campaign. Also, NAD's website, the Child First Information, is also doing the same. So thank you for watching. I wish you all a happy Thanksgiving, and we will be back in touch with you all again soon. Take care.